Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings, and it is that time of year to start thinking about porch planters. So I went and found the planter that I use every year for my porch uh, planters. And this is just one I use in the winter. Um, I use the aqua pots during the summer because those are self-watering. And that's what all my annuals need is a self-watering planter. But in the winter, when you're putting your porch planters together, literally you can use the old dirt from the things that you planted this summer. You just need something to stick your branches into. So we've got this nice and full of soil or dirt. And I'm gonna go ahead, I have a whole bunch of different branches that I went out foraging today, both in my yard and in a friend's yard. And we're gonna stick them in here and create my front porch planter for this year. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with some of the branches that are a little bit thicker, denser, and taller. This particular one here, it's really thick and dense. And look on the back side, it's got silver. So depending on how much I have left, I might trim some of these branches and turn them the opposite direction to give a little bit of a silver look into the container. Now, my container does have a back to it, so I'm planting it back to front. Yours you might see in all directions, so think about that as you're creating like your center or your highest point in the planter. So I put two kind of in the back. This one I'm gonna move up just a little bit more forward because I wanna create a pocket between these two layers for this evergreen, which is a, still pretty dense, but a more airy dense feel to it. And this one smells so good and is nice because it's soft. So it doesn't poke me as I'm playing with it. That's one thing when you're doing porch planters is a lot of times these evergreens are pokey. So it's really a good idea to wear gloves. Now this one here might be a little tall, but we'll see. This one's got too much going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my sun green pruners here. And I'm just gonna take a couple of the bottom branches off because I'll be able to use these as we get towards the front a little bit more. These are a little small, but all right, so we'll see. There we go, shove that in there. You can see how that's kind of, I think, given a little bit of a layered look. It's hard to know when I'm working from the back forward. And then, I just have one sprig of white pine, which is not great for doing these containers because it is so loose and airy. Uh, but I'm just gonna sit that kind of in the middle here, just because it does have some interesting texture. Um, I guess I have a little piece. <laughs> Stick it in the front, I don't know. Uh, let's see, also, I believe, my friend was saying this is hemlock, so it's smaller needles, not sharp like some of the others. And it also has just little itty bitty pine cones on it, so that's kind of fun. We really won't see them, but just a fun, fun factoid. So let's see, how many pieces? I got a several. So let's shove that in there. I almost feel like I'm losing the ones that I put in the back. So we'll see, I might end up ripping this all apart when I get it done, but that's the beauty. This is very easy to redo. Keep hiding behind it as I go back and forth. shoved way down in that soil. Let's see, maybe I can, there we go, push that in a little bit more. Okay, I gotta do a little turn because I gotta see what you're seeing here. Oh boy. Hmm. We'll keep going. We can always redo if need be. Okay, what else? I also grabbed some arborvitae and the arborvitae this year are they're doing this where they're getting all brown they're basically shedding so I'm gonna pull that out because I don't want dead looking stuff in here and this is kind of nice because it's thick and full so we'll just set them guys kind of up in the front shaking it sort of working um, I'm gonna just tear some of these branches off
spinning and twirling. So these, these look different than the other ones. So I don't know. I gotta cut them. They're not shoving in nicely. Okay, now. There we go. That way it looks similar-ish. Another thing I found when I was out in my yard was some arborvitae that's yellow tipped. So I thought that would look kind of cool just to give a little color breakup in the container. You watch, I'm going to flip this off the ledge and I will really be starting over. So we're just going to tuck that in there. This is a pretty, I think this is the only one I have. This is a pretty big chunk, so I'm going to go ahead and break it. Stick it kind of in there. And then these little pieces that I just broke off shove in the front like that all right I'm going to turn it again because now I really have to see what's going on okay so the things I put in the back like I can't even see them so I'm going to do a little switcheroo here and I'm going to remove this tall one that is blocking pretty much everything that's behind it and I'm going to take the one in the back and put that one closer to the front. Like that. And I'm going to put this one in the back. The reason why I like this one in the back, though, is it just had like a denser, fuller look to it, but I couldn't see it. So I think by putting this in the back, I'll be better off. Yeah, that's better. This maybe seems a little weird because it's tall, so I might have to snip that one down a little shorter. But I think that's better. All right. Now, I've got kind of a space up front here. So I'm just going to look at the things that I trimmed off or have little pieces left of. Just stick them in there to fill in the front. I do have one thing that I have that I'm saving. You know how you have the thriller, filler, spiller when you're planting up your annuals? I kind of like that thought, too, when I'm doing my containers. So I have something I'm saving that's going to be my spiller. Shove that really, really tight in there. To kind of fill in that space. So the things I were saving are these. Don't know what they are. I feel like they might be a juniper of some sort, but they're like a weeping juniper. So I'm going to stick those in the front. I'm going to kind of start from the center going out. kind of let them trail over the front like so. These two are kind of shedding, so I'm going to pull these brown ones off. Like that. And because it would look dumb having two, right, I have a third. It's pretty flimsy, though, so I'm going to break the stem. Just kind of set that one in the center, but not coming like right down the center, it's still going to be kind of off to the side. So let's see. Yeah, I think that looks good, giving just some interest in the front. Now for the elements. So I just went out in the landscape and pulled some red twig dogwood. It's a little early for this yet because we haven't lost all of the leaves yet off of our dogwood. So I had to go and just kind of strip them with my hand. So you are seeing like little green leaves still. That looks kind of dumb. But once it gets cold, they're going to fall off. So I'm just going to let them do their thing. So I'm going to, I look for long branches. And one thing to point out, when you are, look, if you have dogwood in your yard, yellow twig or red twig, to keep your twigs nice and fresh and bright, it is important to trim that dogwood every two or three years. So if you start feeling like the leaves are or the, the stems are turning brown, just go ahead and trim that plant back. And then the fresh new twigs are going to give that vibrant red color. So I just love using dogwoods in these containers because it just adds that extra splash of color. So let's go ahead and slip them in. They don't have to necessarily go in the back either. 
My first thought was to put them in the back, but I'm not. I'm going to stick them in the middle. And I probably, this is a fairly small, immature shrub I was trimming off of. So this is as long as I could trim the branches. I wish it was a little older, so next year will be better, where I can get a little bit more height. But for now, I mean, you use what you have, and this is what I have. So it just gives a little splash. Another thing I'm going to add in are hydrangea blooms. And I just went out and picked these this morning as well. Uh, typically what I would do is dry them first before I stick them in, which I do have some drying because we're going to be doing parties here at the greenhouse, but I don't want to use those. So see how there's kind of an ucky side and then this side looks more pretty? I'm going to put the pretty side forward. Maybe if it wants to. I might need to trim that one. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to trim it because I want it to nestle down in there. Like so. If they're too tall, especially here in Michigan, like when it gets windy and the snow and stuff, it'll pull these things right out. So this side, I'll probably go this way. Oops, gotta shorten it a little bit. The other thing too is when I put hydrangeas in, I like to do them in threes. There's just something about that odd number. So I'm going to go out in the landscape and grab one more. Um, I had somebody shared them with a friend. So um, I'm going to go out and probably grab one more. And this is what I'm so excited about. When I went to my friend's yard and gathered some of the greens, she had these beautiful winter berries. Like I don't have these in my yard yet. So they are planted. So in hopefully two years, I'll have a bush big enough to do some trimming. Um, but she gave me some winter berries. So we're going to put these in for splashes of red. And we were debating if we wanted to pull the leaves off them or leave the leaves on. And I'm going to leave the leaves on for now because these berries are so fragile, meaning like if I touch, start pulling the leaves off, these berries are going to fall off too. And I don't want to risk losing berries because I've got these, you know, leaves. This one's got a weird angle, so I got to cut that. I'm not the cleanest planter. I have messes going everywhere, but at least I got stuff to use. I'm going to put those kind of right in the center there. That looks nice. And I think because I have the hollies in the center, I may not need to go get that third hydrangea because the hollies is kind of that third element in this grouping. We'll see. I have a few more hollies, though, and I'm going to use them. She gave them to me, so I want to use them. So let me grab those. Check out this beautiful chunk of berries. So I'm going to trim some of the branches off. They got to go forward. These are a pretty predominant thing I want showing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Try to figure out what's the best branch with the most berries. Look at that gorgeous plant. Turn it towards me a minute and see what I got. I'm the last to know how it looks. You're the, you're the first to know. I think that looks really good. Um, I have another tall thing. So I'm going to stick that in the back. So I want to get just a little bit more height because this is such a huge planter. Like, I think the height is important. Didn't do a lot, but just gave us a little. And because I have them, 
just going to tuck some more in. Just, that just covered up my hollies, I think. I'm going to shove it way in there. Just to add a little bit more texture and interest here right up in the front. All right, so yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I might, when I get home, I have these, um, they're like twigs that have lights on them, so I might poke some of those in here just to have a little bit of that twinkling light at night look. I do have a couple birch logs at home too. I don't know if this needs the birch logs though. Maybe not. So I think this looks pretty good. It's got a lot of colors, a lot of textures. Um, some nice contrast to it so excited to get this out on my front porch once it's time to switch over to the holiday mood and i'm really impressed with myself because usually this is a november 1 project so i'm weeks ahead of time